Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, this is actually really interesting, probably more so than you bargained for. So, everybody knows uh, White Christmas by Bing Crosby. I almost said Merry Christmas because that's what that album says, but you know what I mean. So basically, this song has an amazing history that you may not be aware of. Some people know that the version that we all know and love was recorded in 1947, and that the original 1942 is a rarity because they wore it out. It was so popular, like over 50 million sales, eventually growing to over 100 million sales. They literally wore out the master, and Bing Crosby had to go back into the studio and re-record it. And so they got the Trotter Orchestra, the Darby Singers back together. There are a couple of nuances that are different, but the version that you hear, know, and love is the 1947 version, which is represented here. You can find the original version if you YouTube it. It's not that hard to find. But this is an interesting story in and of itself. But what you may not know, and okay, before we get to the interesting, super interesting part, a uh, little backstory. So it was written in 1940 in California by Irving Berlin, who actually was writing the song uh, in preparation for a musical that would eventually become the movie Holiday Inn. It's a kind of popular Christmas movie. Not one of my absolute favorites, but it's still pretty good. Interestingly enough, it's kind of not quite a se not quite a prequel, not quite a uh, an original version of the movie White Christmas from 1954. Although they did use a lot of the same sets, and we've talked about that. But what's interesting. Um, is in La Quinta, California, 1940, Irving Berlin writes this song, and he, he writes it, and this is so sad, uh, in longing for his son who had passed away. So it was an interesting, very melancholy backstory as to, you know, what the song was about. And it's known as the very first popular secular Christmas song. And it proved to the industry that secular Christmas music was a thing. And, you know, until I learned that, I didn't really think of it as being secular or non-secular. Really, it's just, you know, great Christmas music. And we're going to listen to it, so hang in there. Um, but I just want to talk about it a little bit. I think it's absolutely a fascinating story. And uh, first appeared December 25th, 1941, in the Kraft Music Hall. Bing Crosby sung it at that point. Obviously, now it is forever associated with him. Uh, but an interesting, interesting story. Okay, so I've got two versions of this record. They are both going to feature the 1947 common recording of White Christmas. And there is a version of this album that actually says White Christmas. This is the more common Merry Christmas. And unfortunately, it is the stereo modified version. So this isn't the original mono. It has been modified for stereo, which... It's a shame, but it's what I have. <laughs> I made a buck for this. Got this a few years ago at a thrift store. And it's a it's a good record. It's obviously DECA. I want to show you this, though. The problem with mine is this side, too. Look at the beautiful DECA label. The problem with mine, though, is the first track. As you can see, there's a nasty, nasty cut in there. It looks like somebody tried to play like a antique phonograph on it drop a reproducer on there like a heavy steel needle or something like that so that's silent night i'm missing that track on there unfortunately but it's still worth having it's super cool i love the artwork as a kid i had the cassette tape of this and i would listen to this every year and i remember you know in the car ride back on christmas eve from family we would visit on christmas eve i remember just looking up into the sky and listening to this it's just good memories the album is a treasure. Get yourself a copy of this. They're not super rare. You can find them. I happen to come across this in the wild. You're more likely to have to order this one online. I don't think it would show up that frequently. Um, but great art on the back here showing a lot of other Christmas music albums that you can look for. Decca Full Stereo. True stereophonic record for proper stereo reproduction use. R-I-A-A -A equalization. Say. R-I-A-A is something we need to talk about. We need to do a show. That's long overdue. But interesting. Very beautiful. And this one came also with one of these colored insets. Now, even though I've upgraded this, I, this is actually the sleeve. 
paper sleeve, which these would seem like they're softer paper than the newer paper sleeves, but still I upgraded to one of the Hudson Hi-Fi uh, rice paper line sleeves. But I keep these old ones because I like the artwork. If it's a plain white one, I just toss it, but these full color inserts are just amazing. This kind of information can also date the pressing that you have as well. I haven't dated this one, I am not sure. You can look at this and say, okay, well, when did these albums come out? That might give, give us a clue. But I just love reading about this stuff. RCA Dining Groove, that helps date it. Neat stuff, really cool. Then I came across this recently. This is obviously a seven inch record, Bing Crosby, White Christmas, where the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. Similar artwork with a little signature from Bing on there and an awesomely placed paper sticker that I can't take off without damaging things. Thanks guys. On the back, it's the same thing. And then let's see what's on the inside. Just a paper sleeve. But I saw this and I'm like, okay, I will be owning that. Thank you very much. Got that over here in case you're wondering about the weird angle. So we got two records here on the left. We've got DECA on the LP3 and on the right, we have an MCA reissue on seven inch. So let's go ahead and listen a little bit, shall we? We'll be using the LP3 in mono, or in, mono, in uh, manual mode. Let's go ahead and drop our needle in a couple different places. All the fields we go. You can hear that echo, and that's that stereo reprocessed audio. Andrew sisters on there. There's an interesting story about uh, Bing Crosby being asked what was the most difficult thing you ever had to do in your career, and he stated that it was I think 1944, World War II, was very involved in the USO, and he as well as you know Bob Hope and the Andrew sisters. That's what made me think of it. Were requested to sing White Christmas. Specifically, um, Bing Crosby was requested to sing White Christmas. And he said there was 10,000 GIs in attendance and they were all weeping because they were all thinking about, you know, their loved ones back home. Just gut-wrenching that he had to keep a straight face and do that song without breaking down himself. And this is right before the Battle of the Bulge. It just so happens that many of those 10,000 soldiers never did make it back home. It's Christmas time in the city. Amazing resonance, not only in his voice, but in the record as well. I wish I could play more. If it, if it wasn't for this darn content ID match, I'd be playing all kinds of records. Picture you've ever seen. This so... The likelihood of finding one of these and getting it in your hands before Christmas is low if you want it. But rest assured, this stuff is all, this is a very common music, even though the records may be a little harder to find. So tell me down below in the comments, do you own this? I'm sure you probably do. If not, I would recommend getting a copy. I'd listen to this all year round and sometimes do. Um, but anyway, what I was going to say is if you want to hear this, you can find it on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, it's out there, so you can definitely get a hold of it if you want to. One of my favorites right there. Makes me think of uh, Christmas Vacation. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't like that association, but at the same time, <laughs> it's a great song. And have you heard... Oh gosh, what is his name? I'm going to totally blank on this now. It sounds stupid, even more than normal. Uh, Jimmy Buffett's version of that, Melikaliki Maka. Great version! I just heard that for the first time this year. Very impressed. All right, we're going to listen to a little bit more. Let's listen to Side B here. Um, I'm just going to go through all these songs. This may be a little bit longer show, so bear with me. I hope you enjoy it. It's Silent Night, and um, I have to play only the second half because of that scratch. I think this record is organized with a secular on one side and the, <clears throat> and the uh, non-secular on the other. There it is. So I guess that theory's out the window because that was a secular song. 
kidnapping taken score. Beautiful music though. Absolutely beautiful music. Children's Even if I have the reprocessed stereo version, I want the mono version, but that's okay. Alright, let's look at the uh, seven inch disc now. Over here on the Electrohome, just because I have it out and about. Let's take a look at this label. So this is MCA. Again, thanks guys for slapping a sticker right on the label there. And I've learned to just kind of leave those. That one even goes into the runout groove. That's ridiculous. That one I might peel off. But sometimes you can rip the labels apart by accident. Um, Ken Darby Singers, John Trotter Orchestra. That's interesting. They usually don't put that on there. This says 1973. So there you go. This is White Christmas. And on the flip side, we have God Rest You, Mary Gentlemen. Okay, now I'm really curious. What are they talking about on the label? What does that mean? Where the blue of night meets the gold of day. What am I missing? That's not a song. Let me know that in the comments below. Let's start with uh, God Rest You, Mary Gentlemen. Put this bad boy to 45 RPM. Turn it on. Switch in the back. Button on the front. By the way, a lot of you have mentioned about this unit that it looks red. It's a reddish brown. Or <clears throat> yeah, it is a reddish brown. It's actually cherry wood veneer. It's not quite as red as it looks on camera. It's a little bit more subdued than that. But a fun unit. I really like it. All right, let's go ahead and let's do a couple of samples here. A little bit of hum there. It's okay. He was born. And laid within a manger. Oh. I know, right? Sounds better than you thought it would on this thing. And this appears to be a mono record, which is great. I love that it's the mono version. So this is the granddaddy of them all, White Christmas in glorious mono. So let's listen to it. Sounds much better to me, much more. The White Christmas with Sounds more immediate. You know what I mean? The sound of the mono, and that's a, that's a typical thing in my opinion, is mono versus reprocessed stereo. It just sounds more closer to you. There's a different presence and whatnot. Okay, guys, that's going to do it. Thank you for humoring me with a little bit longer video. I appreciate you all. Let me know in the comments down below. Which, if you have a copy of this, which version you have? Are you lucky enough to have the mono LP version? Have you seen this before? Or do you have another version? I know my friend Fartemark is lucky enough to have a 8-track uh, version of this, which is really neat. I would love to have that as well. I've long lost my um, my uh, cassette of it, unfortunately. But All right, guys, that's going to do it for now. Um, if you want to win a free record player, you better be watching Vlogmas. And we're doing another one today. We're actually traveling to a really cool attraction, something very unique that you will enjoy. Plus, if you are collecting those secret words, you can win a free record player. Check out our video of November 30th to find out how. But anyway, that's going to do it for now. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.